front of the uh, Bethel Park uh, train station in the Bronx. Uh, okay, today's day is uh, August 28th, uh, 2016. Of course, I'm here for a different reason. The event that took place on the same day, early morning of the uh, same day, uh, 1991. Uh, you can see this uh, yard here. Uh, yeah, it's a lot different now than it was uh, in back then. Starting with the trains. Some of these guys look like Kawasaki uh, 142s, together from the uh, Canadian company. I'm going to take some ways because some people are here and I don't want to incorporate their speech. Anyway, there's the station right there. Now, in 1991, you had uh, a train left here. Mortimer was. Uh, for some reason, wasn't at his best. He overran two two stations in the Bronx, and this, I believe, was one of them. But that's a part. The other one, Marshall Loop. Uh, and Dr. Common down, he was able to operate normally for a while, but then we don't know what happened. Afterwards, the train had an accident at 14th Street. He left okay at 42nd Street, but there was a switch set for the uh, local track and the uh, motorman took him too fast to rally the train so half of his train was uh, came on glued killing five people and injuring many others you know the motorman was convicted and sent to jail for that time uh, there's a lot of questions still going around about the uh, incident mostly um, People don't realize that the uh, so part of the problem of the accident goes back to the 60s. There was a state law called the Taylor Law that went into effect back then and had a negative impact on this accident. The first one was the random drug testing. People didn't realize that random drug testing was available in 1988. But it, the reason why New York City Transit didn't have it because since it was no longer a railroad, they weren't qualified to get it. So it was after the accident that random drug testing was made available. And two, most important thing is the subway cars involved were built weaker than they should have been because the uh, law allowed it to do so. It used to be run by under FRA rules and regulations. Unfortunately, when they changed the regulations, they were allowed to have subway cars were weaker. So we believe that's what happened with the Kawasaki 62s. They were built weaker than they should have been. Had they been built like the, the subway cars are running now, most likely the cars wouldn't have came apart in the accident. Ronald Ray's car uh, split at the rear of, near the rear of his first car. So there's another question. How are a person supposed to be so drunk how did he manage to get off the train? The train, half his, a part of his train is now gone without the wheels and that part of the train, now the train is touching the ground and his section is still on the trucks. So how is that possible? You can't be drunk and try to go down that the incline, you would have gotten yourself seriously hurt. Another thing is the story going around about the, um, yeah, I know. About the crack valve that was found in his cab, they thought maybe he was smoking it. Well, here's the problem with that. In order to smoke and crack, you need a crack pipe. There was no crack pipe found in his cab, nothing broken, nothing intact. All they found was an empty crack valve that probably somebody threw in prior to the uh, accident. That was a common thing back in the 90s to the uh, epidemic of the 
uh, or is it crack wars? So, basically, it's a lot more to the story than what you heard in the media. All right, this is the San anniversary. I gotta go.